Hey, what's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to be going over the new patch notes for the recent update of the cycle. So just be sure to stay tuned because I'm going to be sharing all the new info that we have and what's to come with this game. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So here we go. We have the release notes early access August 19th. So that means that we're officially in early access. And they say this right here. So the longest playtest ever just finished. So that was the longest playtest because now we don't have playtests and we are open 24-7. So of course, we already saw changes in the air. A ton of people already read that. But now we actually get what we get in this update. So we starting off, we have two brand new archetypes. We have the exobiologist, which basically he's just trying to basically research what's on the island and all the species and everything. And then we have the gambler. I don't really remember what she was doing, but I think she was hunting for loot or something. But I'm not quite sure about that. So the next thing that we have is a progress wipe. So basically, we did expect this as soon as it went live that we were going to have to wipe everything and just restart. So we are all starting out at level zero again. So we have to grind to get level 10 on all three factions and get all of our weapons again. And then also it says customization restructuring. So basically what they're doing, they are getting rid of the arc enforcer archetype. And they're just resetting everything so we still have to go back and like change our character and everything. I'm still looking for the mass character that they had a while back in the other playtests. So the cool thing that I see here, it says free unlockable customizations options besides the purchase one. So that means that we don't have to pay for every single skin which is super nice. And then we're also allowed to mix and match which is going to be pretty cool to work in progress. See above so it's in there. And basically, you're just going to be able to mix and match different parts and pieces, I believe. And then all items purchased and redeemed will still be available, just need to be re-equipped. So if you purchase a Founders Pack, then you still have everything, you just have to re-equip everything. And then here we go, Faction Progress, reset to zero. So we actually don't have any of our materials, which I had a ton of extra ones, so we're going to definitely have to grind back for those. So this one's pretty cool, we have a brand new enemy type, they've been including a ton of cool little enemies to fight and so now we're getting droids which i haven't played any games just yet but i am hoping to play some this afternoon after this video is released and hopefully we'll get some footage of the droids so basically they have a new attack pattern they don't say anything though and i guess they just want us to play it and see we see a pretty cool picture here saying have you tried turning it off and on again so that's they posted something on their twitter asking what you think it said so it should be interesting and then the next cool thing is a danger zone so basically what these danger zones are is that if there's a ton of players in one certain area they're going to be red and if they're brighter red that means that there's more people there or more of a danger zone where if they're just limited red then that just means like it's just a bit dangerous but you can still handle it and so basically um it's going to highlight areas with high player activity so like players engaging in contact combat and number of players and then the more players are in the area brighter the color becomes the color will become more and more intense according to the threat level and the danger zone is grid based so it's in the grids so the next thing that we have are the bounty contracts that's actually really cool just because they've been talking about this for a while and i've been really wanting to see what they've done with it so i'm glad that we can finally play it so basically it the new contract is to eliminate ruthless players and these are the players that are going for pvp and not going for pve and so you start without the ruthless state and then you become ruthless by killing other players or forcing them to teleport from the down but not out stage so we don't know how many you have to do but i'm definitely going to try to figure that out as soon as possible and i suggest you guys doing the same and then we have you automatically lose the ruthless state if you refrain from doing the ruthless activities for five minutes. This is super nice just because let's say that you're in a fight and just a ton of people are rushing you. You're going to get the ruthless state and you're going to appear on the map because that's what it is. Like if you have the ruthless state, you are a walking contract and you're worth VP based on your kill count. And you're highlighted and visible on the map to warn or encourage other players to engage with you. So if a player is marked, they will get they will be worth at least one VP. So definitely like let that build up, I think. I think that might be the best move. Let them keep on going for PvP as long as they're not fighting you. And then at the very end, 
go and slaughter them and get all those VPs. So the next topic that we have are the kit levels. They're actually bringing this back. I'm pretty sure they took this away the week before I started playing the game, which I started playing in um, playtest number three. So I'm going to be interested to see how this is. So basically, uh, kits have levels just like weapons, except killing monsters and completing contracts gives XP towards the kit level progress. So each kit has seven levels of its up own upgrades, making players more powerful as the match goes on. So the quick suit goes from a single to a triple jump, slides get faster, and jumps get higher, which could be really cool. And that kind of just like gets rid of the limited vertical height that you had with the quick suit. And then the, for the dragonfly, all parts of the jetpack get better from speed to energy to angle and to damage of the dive attack. So that, I don't know what the best kit's going to be now. I have to go and test that. So then for the war suit, we have increases the charge punch damage, the height of the jump, and grants more protection from enemies. And then the basic suit, we have better health regeneration, shorter ability cooldowns, which could be very interesting, more damage to creatures, all kind of perks you might need to stay alive. So definitely have to go play around with that in a few matches, so it should be pretty interesting. And then each level gives a small increase to health and shield, so you're definitely going to want to get to level 7 as quickly as possible. And then pressing L brings up a list of more information. So now we have a change to vehicles. We actually get collision damage and we get small jumps and we're able to boost the speed. So basically what you're going to do, you're just going to press shift on your keyboard to boost and jump is with spacebar. And now to get out, you do have to press F because you used to be able to get out with spacebar, but now just hold F to either mantle or dismount the vehicle. And now if you collide with somebody, they actually take damage, which that's going to be kind of cool because what if it was like a wrecking ball where we could just start driving and trying to do all of our damage with the vehicles might be a fun little challenge that we need to try out. And then there's new um, sounds and everything. So that's it's going to be pretty cool to go test out. So progression. Basically, some changes were made to make it easier to navigate and everything. It's still basically the same game, but they changed a bit of things. So level confusion is no longer present. Basically, you used to get gifted weapons by a faction, but now those don't happen anymore just because people were asking way too many questions about it. And then crafting prices of items were exchanged accordingly so that the items that unlock earlier are easier to craft. So that means that we're probably not going to be able to get the level 10 weapons as quickly as the other ones. So then another big huge change that we have is under gameplay tuning. The red zeal shard now gives as much as the orange zeal shard. So you're definitely going to want to go for that red zeal right away because that's going to be your best bet for getting the most amount of points. Now the main facility now gives two times as many VPs as before. That's super good for getting those high VP games, so just keep that in mind. And then no more rare 500 credit random weapons in crates. I am fine with that. I never really opened crates that much. I just grab the credits from them if I do. I tend to just want to buy my own weapons, and that's basically how I play the game. You guys might be able to do differently, but that's up to you. So then... We also increase mid-match credit income from random monster spawns on the map. So that basically speeds up credit gains. So I don't know how duos is going to work. Like we can get even more credits now. And then we have reduced ticks that are spawned when a player is holding bright caps. This is awesome because I always hate holding as many bright caps as possible just because those ticks will spawn and maybe even kill you. And then mineral slots on the map were tuned in to reduce randomness so that basically means that they're going to be in basically the same spot every single time so definitely learn that if you're trying to become better at the game and then we also have an increased relocation speed of the uplink activity and delayed activation of the first uplink activity so basically what this is saying is that it's not you don't have to have somebody with a quick suit go and cap uplink to get all the points now i think you should have enough time with the other kits to go get there even if you don't have the same movement speed and then the damage of the storm at the end of the match will ramp up over time. That's kind of expected because as the storm goes on, it's just going to get stronger and stronger. So coming up next, we have the tutorial mission. They changed it to where we're doing hunt instead of letium gas. 
and that's basically just because I feel like Hunt kind of teaches you more than Ludium Gas, and they can figure those things out still in the training ground, of course. And new players will now get crafting materials after completing the tutorial for the first time. So the first thing you guys are going to want to do once you download this update is go into that tutorial mission and get the amount of materials that will allow you to craft the first movement kit. So they also added some new weapons that are were available to use in the tutorial and the shuttle evaction is way faster so you get to finish it up a bit more. So then for HUD improvements we basically reduced the clutter, uh, realigned elements, um, contract markers on the minimap and HUD tracker will now appear based on your proximity to them. Uh, weapon recoil improvements, single fire weapons now use predefined recoil curves so be sure to learn those. Um, less extreme and more predictable recoil overall. So that's basically just sums that up. So for miscellaneous, we have ability mods have now been removed. That means every single one of them is now a separate ability. So we should have a way more abilities than last time. And then social links were added to the launch screen so that we can get in touch with all the cycle and everything, be part of the community even more. We have updated logos for Core 11 Osiris. I actually really want to see this. I can't play it though until later, so I'm kind of upset about that. And then a player survey will appear in your inbox when you reach level two. They want to like look forward to getting to know all the players. And I guess I didn't know when, but we actually crossed 250,000 players on the game, which is crazy for the game. Like that's such a good accomplishment. It's crazy how much this community has been growing and it's going to be a ton of fun if it keeps on growing like this. And then the fire animations for various weapons were polished and all of that stuff because it is miscellaneous. It's just there and that. And then mouse sensitivity has been lowered by default. I'm going to stick to 30. That's kind of my favorite sensitivity. And then we have bug fixes. So in sandbox mode, the mini map and extended map views should not be missing or empty anymore. And then in solo mode, instances where your pack mate died and couldn't break the pack or create a new pack should not occur anymore. And then added upgrade for money blank and that's like the amount of cash that it's going to take for the gear store so players know like which gear is ready to be upgraded with their credits and then they just changed the name from costume to appearance and launch to launch bay and i don't really know why but just probably to understand just a bit more and then minimum font size increase for readability and then launching the game is executable without the epic games launcher no longer gives you a black screen but you must still launch the game through Epic Games Launcher if you want to actually play the game. And then they reduce hitches. So that's good. Um, just keep in mind that the text and voice chat still disabled. And then we now have Spanish and French. And they integrated the new Unreal Engine 4 version of 4.22. So the crashes may occur. So just keep in mind for that. And then duo mode. This is kind of important. The revenue share between pack makes is shown as 50%, but it's still 100% like it used to be. So guys, that does wrap up these patch notes. It's definitely a very cool update. I'm still looking forward to the battle pass or whatever they're calling it. I think it's Fortuna pass. That's going to be super interesting. Going to give us something to grind for. So I'm still on the edge of my seat waiting for that. But if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe because we're trying to get to 700 subs hopefully by the end of this month. So if you guys could help me out by doing that, that would be much appreciated. But with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.